but what they did is uh, they identified a very, when they analyze different data from multiple sources they identified a very strong correlation between the sales and the tenure of the salesman in that region hmm. and when they when they see that where the tenure were less for the salesman the sales were on the declining trend because you know when the salesmen are staying for a short time they were taking all the relationships with the customers with them so hmm. that was actually the main reason yeah. and that insights generated when they combine or you can say analyze financial data with non financial data that's a tenure of the and that led to lots of different decision then the ceo the top management of the company they involved the hr how should we you know improve our turnover how should we retain our employees better in the sales department so many things comes up and that was really the new insights for the whole company and even for the hr was involved in the decision making this podcast is sponsored by and this podcast is sponsored by so in our podcast leader insights we invite business leaders to speak about their uh, personal mastery and their business insights and the subject of digital transformation is somehow misused these days everyone is using digital transformation in a different context and we're happy to have you Zeeshan in this podcast to share some light about the digital transformation journey because you're the expert of that so welcome to the show thank you very much ma'am it's my great pleasure to have you with you so before we start we just need to know you better and if you just take a few moments to explain how do you define your personal mastery um, in general i believe personal mastery is about uh, how you control and manage your own life or your own career i usually say to people like you are the ceo of your life and as i think the steven kavi said in his remarkable book seven habits of highly effective people that you should start with the end in mind that's what i think mean is uh, like you should have the very clear vision and mission of your own life what's your destination where you want to what you want to achieve you know what's your end goal or objective in life and the purpose of life i believe most of the professionals either finance professionals or business professionals when they are indulged into their day to day activities jobs or businesses sometimes they you know lose the focus on their own purpose in life that's why i believe the personal mastery is really really very important it's about controlling managing your life having the clear vision mission of your life your objectives and the clear road map how you are going to achieve those objectives that's how i define the personal mastery so in that sense in in life we have uh, a lot of noise uh, impacting our uh, personal mastery and impacting our way of controlling our own life our objective our purpose how do you manage the noise on a daily basis how you st- how do you stick to your your personal mystery or your life objective in general yeah of course as you mentioned life is never a straight line um, it's for nobody if you are expecting a life to be a straight line it means you are not much practical uh, so always the challenges are there and if you have that mindset if you have that passion to achieve something i believe there are nobody who like are free from hurdles or obstacles in their life so you should have that right mindset the patience perseverance passion to achieve something then i think you should be able to cope with such challenges in life and that's how i did also in my entire journey okay and in in life in general there is a special moments uh we know them like a, a lighting uh spot in our own career and our own personal life as well you remember these moments it's like a key moment in life mm-hmm. do you have one of these moments where you decide that this is the moment that i need to work differently on my growth on my mindset on my life in general like a key moments in life yeah exactly i think as i was in i started my career in accounting and finance and as you all know due to this emerging technologies and disruption the role of finance and accounting going through a massive transformation and change so when i was working as a traditional general accountant or even auditor i started from pwc from that time i was having this feeling that like my role is very traditional it's very you can say the back end service provider just working on the numbers box ticking compliance so from that time i really had this feeling like really i need to step out of my comfort zone 
if I really want to, you know, uh, play a more active role at the forefront of the business rather than at the back end. So from that time, I had this feeling that I need to reskill up, skill myself in order to elevate my role within the organization as well as in my career. Okay. Uh, I have one more question on on your in your foundation, but let's park for that with a minute because you opened the door for our main subject today, which mm-hmm. is digital transformation. Right. Link it with what you used to do before in in your own career as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the business is going through disruption, and the base of the disruption is increasing every day. Mm. We don't. We sometimes we think that this is the last wave of disruption, and then we're gonna back to normal. And back to normal never come back, mm-hmm. as you can see since the COVID, if I may record in 2020. Mm-hmm. Now, during this business disruption, how digital transformation reshaping finance as a function? So. Digital transformation is not only entitled for finance, it is entitled mm-hmm. for the entire business transformation. But now, how the digital transformation is impacting finance as a function to start with? Uh, yeah, really, I think that's a great question. And when we talk about digital transformation these days, these are the two different words. First of all, I always tell to my clients or in our academy as well, a digital is something else transformation is something else digital is Mm. about the technologies all your uh, digital and emerging technologies you have you name it ai rpa blockchain transformation is really something different (laughs) some people when we talk about digital transformation they usually think about only the emerging and disruptive technologies but it's really not only about the technology it's about what how those technologies are really transforming your processes your organization and the most important is the people because without people i believe no transformation is possible so if you don't have the right people the right mindset the transformation uh, overall digital transformation like according to gartner more than 70 percent of the transformation project fails Hmm. and it's because of lack of focus on the people so I, I like the concept that you divided the definition into two different uh, dimension, if I may say, digital and transformation. Right. Uh, where you said digital, it is mainly entitled with the tools mm-hmm. or the trends exactly. in general, not exactly as a tool. Maybe the revolution like AI, AI is not a single tool. And transformation, which is mainly entitled for the people behavior, processes, uh, end state or direction, the transformation journey as a as an overall. Now, if you can share some light on, let's start with the transformation. Let's give bark the digital for now. Mm. How do you see transformation is reshaping finance function in particular itself? Yeah, sure. And I think before moving on to transformation, also it is very important. It's in my view, uh, like there is a difference between a change and transformation. Also, I sometimes. Mm. Change I define is as sometime like fixing the past and transformation is about shaping the future or reshaping the future of your organization, yourself or your business. Mm -hmm. There are many projects which are going on into the companies which are labeled as transformation, but those are basically just change initiatives. Mm -hmm. I can give you some examples like if you implement a new ERP system or upgrade your systems, sometimes people, you know, named it as a transformation. But those are actually just the change initiative. They are not only really, uh, you can say, redefining the role of finance or elevating the role of finance. So how, uh, the, do your question, digital transformation is reshaping. It's, it's basically elevating the role of finance from the backend service provider to a more, we can say, a strategic enabling enterprise where finance should be able to play a more strategic role as a strategic advisor to the business. So that's how I think digital transformation is really reshaping or redefining, I can say, the role of finance. Okay. So the the the, the elevation of the finance function uh, to be more uh, business partner and value creator in the business, rather than uh, support function. Exactly. If I if I may say. Okay. Uh, now let's 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 build on that. Do, do you believe, Zishan, that finance to be as a business partner are more into value creator? Do they need transformation, digital transformation, or they can start from now before any transfer, digital transformation journey? 
Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, like uh, digital and transformation, like these are the two different areas. Mm-hmm. Like, if you first of all, if you starting a transformation in your organization, it's not necessarily only about the technologies. You can start with your processes. Maybe there are some processes in your organizations, you know, which are like not good or not effective. You can first start fixing your processes within. Maybe that really brings some change. I can give you one example from our uh, client recently. Uh, they have a, like almost a medium-sized organization with close to 1,000 employees, and uh, they were working in the uh, FNB industry. Mm. In F&B industry, you know, there are lots of transactions on daily basis. So retail, they have their retail, also manufacturing, kitchens, all. There are thousands of transactions, even on daily basis or weekly basis. What they were doing, like uh, their finance function were overburdened with the uh, invoices and the transactions and the finance account and the accountants who were sitting in the finance function. They were the ones sitting and booking all the bills and invoices. We recommend when we go there as a consultant, we recommend them why the finance is doing it, why the branch outlets, branch manager, why you not make the process where they entered all the invoices and you have the ERP system already. Mm. And they were not utilizing it, you know, they had the ERP, but they were not utilizing it. So just by changing a little process, it makes a huge difference in the time mm. they were they saved. This is just a, like one example I gave you. So like this, there are so many processes in order to cash, procure to pay, record to report in your fp so before moving on to any technology and tool, it is very important to have a look at your existing tools, what you have, what existing technologies you have, and either you are leveraging that technology to its full potential or full functionalities, mm. and how you can improve your processes, your people, and then of course, technology is no doubt one of the key enabler of any transformation. And so what I say is the transformation is enabled by technology, drive by people. So okay. it should you should have the right people on the team in order to drive the transformation as well. So, so speaking about the people now, Dishan, mm-hmm. uh, what kind of the new skill or competences that finance professionals uh, they need to acquire to mm-hmm. cope with the disruptive change as we speak now and to fit into the transformation journey? This mm-hmm. is one. Uh, and second. Uh, you know, now there is a merge between, you've seen as well in the market, between DNA roles and finance analyst roles and finance roles. For the first time ever, Zishan, I see in the job description required for financial analyst, like exactly basic competence of the DNA role as well. If you mm-hmm. see the announcement of DNA role and finance analyst role, mm-hmm. you're going to mix them up. It's sort of very common as we mm-hmm. speak now as a requirement. So both goes hand in hand in the, my question, what kind of the new skill and competence required mm. for the finance professional, especially the financial analyst as well? Mm. Right, I think this is a great question as well. And when anyone asks me, because I am uh, in touch with so many professionals who are asking me for the advice or coaching, so always my advice starts with the mindset rather before the skill set. Mm. Because if you have the right growth mindset, you know, there are two types of usually the mindset, fixed mindset or the growth mindset. If you have the growth mindset, then of course, you will open lots of opportunities for yourself. There is lots of, you know, room for improvements and growth in your business or careers. So that's why it's all start first with the right mindset. And of course, when you talk about the skill sets, so I divide it basically in the three, I can say building blocks for finance professionals. Mm. Number one is the partnering skill set. Uh, number two is the strategic leadership. And number three is the, your analytical capabilities or you can say analytic analytical thinking. When I say about partnering skill set, it's all about your collaboration skills, your teamwork, most of your soft skills, your communication skills. So these are really, really very important because if you have all the world's best technologies, but if your finance team, they don't have the good partnering skill, they're not able to collaborate or partner with other business functions, really it's not going to add any value. You cannot be a value creator really. So the partnering skill set is really on the top most important. Then the second is the strategic leadership. Mm-hmm. The strategic leadership is all about understanding your business, your markets, ex- internal, external factors, your competitors, and that's where you act as a strategic advisor to your business. So. When you report the numbers to your management, mm. 
you should be able to articulate a holistic business stories behind the numbers, not just reporting a PNL or balance sheet or simple analysis or variance analysis. That's a very traditional analysis mm. that finance do or even some ratio analysis. In my view, that's very old and very basic. And most of the CEOs or the management, they already know these uh, metrics. Mm. So it's all about how you articulate the holistic business stories. That's where you need a data storytelling skills as well. Very important. Uh, that's also a, one of the softest skills you can say. And the strategic leadership second. The third one is your analytical thinking that also includes data analytics or how you analyze the data or how you leverage different analytics tools available in the market these days. Because if you have a very good partnering skills, if you have a very good understanding of the strategy, but if you are not able to analyze the data, if you are not able to drive the insights from that data, of course, you cannot add the value. So in my view, partnering skill set, as I mentioned, a strategic leadership, and analytical thinking. Apart from the reddish finance and accounting, of course, th those are the foundation, basic. But these are the three building blocks, I can say. Okay. That is really important. Th that's very interesting, Zishan. I'll start from the last point that you highlighted, especially with the technology and, uh, and data capability now. We have like a data explosion in the market. Mm -hmm. So much data now is uh, available compared to before. Uh, financial data, market data, economic data. And in some cases, it's uh, like free to use everywhere. And now even ERB system now started to be designed to collect as much data as we can. And now with the cloud, we can store as much as we can. So the question is, uh, how finance professional can leverage on this data? Mm -hmm. Giving the last point about the analytical uh, skill. Any experience for you, from your own business and customers uh, that you deal on a daily basis, that they have so much data and they cannot use, they cannot make the best use out of that. What is your advice and what, do you have any example in that in that manner? Yeah, very, very, I think this is a relevant question and very important because uh, uh, when we talk about data analytics, the starting point is the data governance because mm -hmm. we go into many organizations on digital transformation project for our clients. Uh, the starting, like, they, obviously they want to implement data analytics tool, visualization tool, but the first starting point always is the data governance. Do they have the right data, the data sources? And also as to your question, as you mentioned about the different sources. So yes, this is really, really, I think, important for the finance professionals to collect the data from multiple sources. And then uh, you can say, analyze or identify the correlation between financial, non-financial data. I can give you an example of our, one of our client, they were, their sales team, they were analyzing their quarterly results, financial results. Mm -hmm. And they saw that the sales in some of their regions were on a declining phase, they were declining. They went to the VP of sales, okay? And they asked, what's the reason of declining the sales? So the VP answered that there were some of the deals which slipped from one quarter to the next. So this was the reason of the decline in the sales. But the finance team was smart and they were leveraging data analytics. So when they go deep dive into the data and they collect data, as you mentioned, from non-financial data, also from different sources, not only just relying on their ERP or even though these days we have a cloud ERP, a very good ERP system, you can collect payroll data, CRM, customer data, supplier, everything is available. Mm. But what they did is uh, they identified a very, when they analyze different data from multiple sources, they identified a very strong correlation between the sales and the tenure of the salesman in that region. Hmm. And when they, uh, they see that where the tenure were less for the salesman, the sales were on the declining trend. Because, you know, when the salesmen are staying for a short time, they were taking all the relationships with the customers with them. So mm. that was actually the main reason. Mm. And that insights generated when they combine, or you can say, analyze financial data with non-financial data, that's a tenure of the. And that led to lots of different decisions. Then the CEO, the top management of the company, they involved the HR, how should we you know, improve our turnover? How should we retain our employees better in the sales department? So many things comes up and that was really the new insights for the whole company and even for the 
HR was involved in the decision making. So it was a little insight, you know, by comparing your financial loan, financial letter. Like this, there can be several examples, even from your operations, from external factors, maybe your sales is correlated with your employ unemployment, with the inflation. So many factors can be. So that's why uh, it's really important because most of the time I saw finance professionals, they focus more on the financial data only, mm. co collecting lots of data from their working capital, about their cash flow, about the payable, receivables. Yes, there are lots of insights that you can drive, of course, no doubt, from the financial data itself. Mm. But you have to also identify the correlation between financial and financial data and get as maximum data from multiple sources as possible, even from your CRM, your lead generation, for example, if you get the lead generation data from your business development department or CRM, you would be able to identify your sales, whether it's going to be increased, decreased, if you have a flattening lead, uh, lead generation curve. So lots of insights you can gen uh, generate from those analytical uh, you know, uh, calculations or the correlations. Now, you mentioned the transformation mindset mm -hmm. when it comes to the people. Um, there, there is a, there is a few points that I want to touch on the transformation before we go to the tool, and we can, maybe we end our episode by the tool. Now, with the disruptive thinking and what is going on in the market, the finance team, or especially the FPNA uh, professions, they need to be more agile and they need to be more uh, adaptable to the changes changes internally within their organization or externally to the market dynamics as we speak now. So given the importance of the mindset of that transformation you highlighted, can you share some light on uh, the agility and adaptability mindset as well within the finance uh, professional and especially FP&A? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think really the mindset, as I mentioned, is the cornerstone of any transformation or the basis of any transformation projects. Mm. And even, you know, when I am involved in lots of recruitment of the finance professional, even the CFOs and senior positions. So my questions are really, you know, very like the same, pretty much the same for all, with all the candidates, especially for the mid to senior levels. I always try to ask them like, first of all, what were the problems they solve? in their job and how they solve it you know what and i also ask them questions like tell me the situation where your curiosity was at at peak mm. in your work mm. and those who really did that you know they answered it very well and those who try to you know uh, if they are just uh, yeah, you can say uh, if they're not real, the real story you, you can understand it so uh, to your question about agility, and I think it's all from the mindset. If you have the agile mindset and uh, the way you approach things, it all depends upon that how the finance is fun uh, functioning. Because most of the time, I think the finance function, since ages like how the finance function is being operating is at the back end only, you know. That's why we call them as a gatekeeper, you name it. There are lots of numbers, scorekeeper, gatekeeper, or uh, um, a number cruncher, whatever you can name it. Uh, that's why, because the finance function, usually they love working on a spreadsheet, sitting in front of their screens, not spending enough time with the business partners or with the business other business functions. So that's where I think the agility is really important. And also they need to be, uh, they need to understand the latest trends that are going on into the market. How, as I mentioned in the start, like the strategic leadership, is all about understanding the internal as well as external factors into them like what is how it's going to impact your business how it's going to impact your industry that your business is operating in and the most important part is also what i feel is sometimes the financial planning function it is not very rightly you can say or strongly integrated with the strategic planning mm. usually in many organizations they build the strategy and then the finance comes at the end, you know, although it should be the other way around. When you start building the strategy, the finance and the HR, these are the two functions you should be aligned, you should align with them. Mm. Because they are the one who are going to allocate all the resources, financial resources and then human resources. And without that, no strategy or a strategic planning is possible. So I think to be more agile, it is very important to integrate your financial planning with the strategic as well as the operational planning. And that's what I did also when I worked in with the Dubai government on a mega FP and a transformation project. 
our main aim was to integrate their financial planning with their strategic and operational planning because mm. their strategy, they had their five year plan comes from the government the way government and th- it was completely disconnected mm. at the moment at that time so that was the aim of our transformation to make the finance function more agile it needs to be integrated and there should be one single source of truth because the data is coming from so many multiple sources and you know if it is not reconciled or how you can be more agile or you know uh, more flexible in that one so that's why i think uh, that's where the integration part the single source of truth and also you know keeping updates with all the latest developments that are going on into the market into the market that is very important as well as uh, you can say about the most of the finance function they just you know uh, waiting for the monthly closing or quarterly closing i believe now with the so rapid changes in the market disruptions even there is a concept of now real time reporting or i cannot say real time but close to real time we can say mm. sometimes this word and this word is i uh, mean misused also real time i think sometimes it's not possible in many cases but close to real time you should be very ag- as you mentioned the agility so you should get the data on a real time or at least on a short you know intervals as well to make the quicker decisions and faster or to enable your business partners or business functions to make quick business decisions okay so so back to your question about the the people lag as well now in any business transformation there is a resistance to the change and giving your experience ishan on that I'm sure you face in some customer the leadership they want you to lead and support a transformation journey but people in ground as human nature in some cases mm-hmm. they resist change they don't believe in it they are working against what you're telling them to do as a consultant as a support from outside if I think if you can share some light on how to manage resi- change resistance in any organization mm. whether you're from outside the organization or even within the organization because that will be the huge unlock to mm. get everyone in your journey of the transformation mm. yeah i think uh, the change management is really really very important in any transform in any transformation whether it's a business transformation strategic or finance transformation the change management and somebody who should you can say a change agent or transformation champion because what really happens is in what in my experience also where we saw most of the finance organization planning to transform or you know uh, or going through their transformation journey is like they don't have somebody to lead that project internally sometimes they invite consultants like us we come we go there and but of course they need somebody from within the organization as well who should lead that like we can say a transformational leader because no doubt cfos and finance leaders they are very good in their operations in operational finance running but transformation intelligence i think is something really very important that i even myself i developed this intelligence skills by working on so many transformation projects because always the resistance as you mentioned is always there but what uh, how to cope with this type of situation is always to be more empathetic you know to more show more empathy to the people mm. and always try to see the things from their lens like for example if i go to any client or any any of their departments or any function within the organization always i ask start with what are the problems you are facing what are your number one anxiety in the business what are the challenges you are facing that's where the starting point and then you op- this when you open this topic they come up with so many things like oh we are facing this we are fa- facing this problem challenge and then from there we you know pick some of the points and start okay this is the transformation will be the solution and how then we relate to their challenges or problem that they are facing either it's in their finance in their monthly closing they're facing issues in report generation or or you name it there are so many uh, functions or areas within the finance so and the point is like always start with the problem the number one anxiety in the business even this is very important to get the buy in because the uh, question that you raise is all about how you get the buy in from the people especially from your other business functions or within your organization or within your department so to get the buy in always start with uh, addressing their problems their challenges what is the number one anxiety in the business and start to solve you know 
those issues and address those issues. So that's where we feel. And also, apart from this, some um, coaching, mentoring is also important sometimes because, uh, especially in RPA, when we talk about robotic process automation, <laughs> they, we like most of the people they feel like their job is going to be you know they are going to be uh, like uh, eliminated. Applied, eliminated or redundancy they have a fear of redundancy so that's where we always uh, you know coach them or, or ment- give them mentoring that robots are going are not going to replace you they are going to make your life easy so that you can focus on more high value activities rather than your tra- spending your time on transactional work or reconciliations that's the purpose is to elevate your role it's not just coming to replace your job so that's why there are lots of resistance because if you go for rp implementation there is something called pdd you have to design a process design document and that is based on the input from the people if the people they are not giving you the right input means how you will define the right process right mm. so that's why lots of as you mentioned correctly lots of resistance is there uh, and so that's why we need somebody with the transformational intelligence transformational leader either from the outside or from within the organization so that's how we tackle the transformation projects and make it successful and because as i mentioned more than 70% of the transformation project fails unfortunately according to gartner and mckenzie if you see the survey they are failing still and that's the main reason like technology is you know you see if you google it you will find <laughs> thousands of tools technologies are available in the market you can uh, see it online and over the social media linkedin people are talking about every day there is new tool or technology coming on generative ai intelligent automation chat gpt but the main thing is how they are really going to transform the organization that's the main challenge i think and that's where the project fails Okay. Uh that's a very comprehensive uh <laughs> answer Zisha. Uh, I think every statement out of these require a single episode for that. Right. Uh if I just quickly summarize the key highlight I have so the the empathy is extremely important definitely you need to start with empathy, a clarity, getting the buy in, assigning a transformation leader. The transformation leader need to be fully embedded in the transformation journey to support uh, the journey. Uh, be open and transparent with the people because the minute you're gonna be open with them, uh, if there is some task will be eliminated, it, let's so be it. You have to highlight this to him ahead of the time. Then at least they can make their mind and see how they can cater for other opportunity or even add more value through their own tool, uh, role as well. Uh, that's a fabulous, I think you tapped all the change resistance Mm-hmm. answer 360 on that now if I, my, my last two question because time flies as well uh, in your recommendation in your business when you go to any customer organization and then you know the senior leadership they start with the tools you know they love the tools mm-hmm. uh, I have a sales issue that supply chain people they love to uh, build their uh, state of art uh, factory state of art machine they love their tours, they love their fleet, they love their warehouse, you know what I mean, in that sense. Uh, same as marketing, they love their marketing campaign, brand, uh, yeah. image, and all of these. So now, if you go to the business leader, the minute you go, okay, we need a transform- digital transformation, the first thing they discuss is digital, where we highlighted that transformation is more important than digital. But back to the question. If one customer asks you the question, what tool do you recommend for us on the digital transformation journey what will be the criteria to choose and assign the tool? How you guide them mm-hmm. to make their decision? Their decision when it comes to the tools as well, mm-hmm. because as you said, there is so there are so many tools in the market as we mm-hmm. speak now. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, this is a really open question from the client and even for the client as well, uh, because uh, we are going there as not as a solution provider. We are going there as a transformation consultant. So. We are, first of all, not biased towards any particular tool. This is one of our, you can say, values or the core value that we bring to the client. Like We are not biased towards any tool. So when we go to the client, we always start to understand their requirements, their challenges, and what, as I mentioned earlier, also what are the problems they want to solve. And always, as Simon Sinek says, like always you should start with the why. Why you want the tool what tools you have already are you using those tools or to the full extent or to their full functionalities or potential or uh, do we really need the new tools 
So the criteria is very simple uh, because most of the companies, they, what they do sometimes when mistake you can say is like they want to bring the, so they are just impressed by the tools or fancy tools in the market available, chat GPT, AI, generative AI, and they just, you know, want to bring it into their organization to show to their management, yeah, we are going through a digital transformation, but uh, sometimes it should be other way around. Like you should first have clearly your own requirements. What are your uh, challenges, problems, and then work backward. Then look for the tools or technology that can really address those problems. Because even if you talk about EPM, ERP, data analytics, visualization, there are lots of tools available in the market. So that's why it's not really about uh, the tools. There are so many available in the market. It's really about how the tool is going to solve your problem. So that's where we always advise to our clients to how, what is their anxiety in the business? What are their problems? And also what are their next three to five years uh, business plan or strategic plan? Because if you are going to implement or invest in any technology today, it should be able to serve your future plans also. It should be scalable also, and it should be able to meet. So that's why even if we go for any finance or digital transformation project, we always start with something outside the finance. We start with the business. We start with what's your strategy, what's your five-year business plan or strategic plan, what's your vision, mission. Because this is also one of the things like most of the finance transformation project fail is they plan the transformation only in silos within the finance function mm. and like bringing automation and repo, but they really don't understand what really the business need from them. So that's why I think it is very important for finance digital transformation to understand what the business really need, what are the key business priorities of the business, and then work backwards and select the tools that really meets the requirement and enable your all business functions and business partners to make better business decisions at the end to add value. You know, that's all. I think Dishan, that's a that's a fabulous uh, capsule on digital transformation and data analytics. We cover the business, the digital transformation for all angles, including the change uh, management and change resistance. Uh, that's my favorite part of the episode. And we discuss the the emerging part of the digital transformation and data analytics and how data analytics is evolving, giving the big data that we have now and how finance team, well, especially finance analysts, need to cater for that. Uh, the the, the is, it was really a pleasure having you on the show and I think you shared uh, so many uh, values and lights on, on that journey giving your expertise in the market meeting different customers on a daily basis so it's really a pleasure having you on the show thank you so much for accepting the invite it's my honor and play, really a great pleasure to have you thank you thank you, thank you.